because you all set the policy. You determine the strategic direction of your institutions, and you also are responsible to monitor performance and make sure that the taxpayers, and probably more importantly, the students, are getting the very best education uh, for their time uh, and money. One of the things that Jerry is trying to accomplish, and I would like to try to accomplish, is how do we empower boards of trustees at universities to make critical decisions? Uh, some of your presidents might resist change. Um, I can tell you, your faculty will definitely resist change. Many faculty don't want intellectual diversity. That's why we have the universities we have. Secondly, faculty hire faculty. An ideological partisan faculty will never balance itself out. Indeed, the current trends are only getting worse. If you expect faculty to correct this problem, you're a fool. The authority, the people who are in charge at universities are boards of trustees, just like they are boards of directors in companies, just like the General Assembly makes the laws and the governor executes the laws. That's in fact what happens, but it's an extraordinarily difficult job. So you're working for free with no staff making complicated decisions about huge sums of money and very important public policy. That system doesn't work. The faculty think they, the university is for them. The university is for the people of Ohio, and you're their trustees, you're the people's trustees. Another issue is DEI statements, so statements on hiring uh, in completely unrelated fields like science where people are asked to make ideological commitments in order to be hired. These are often screened by uh, administrators before the faculty can even look at the applications. And so if you have 100 applicants, typically about 75 of them will be, uh, won't make it to the faculty at schools that are using these DEI screens because their DEI statement was not sufficiently uh, favorable of, of DEI. And so for example, what I've been arguing, which is that each person should be treated as an individual, that would uh, get an application thrown out. The diversity statements is, is, is one place that we need to start, right? Um, those are ubiquitous in higher ed, and everyone knows it, um, that, that um, every faculty is required to submit a, a diversity statement uh, to be considered. Here's the problem with our current situation. Boards of trustees at the university level are much like, we just changed it, the past uh, Ohio Board of Education. Ohio Board of Education is essentially made up of volunteers who have no staff, who only get their information from the people that they are supposed to be exercising authority over. That's a bad situation. And what we found is that 55% of current college presidents plan to step down in the next five years. The average tenure of a president is now under six years, down a full year since the last survey in 2011, and then two, down two and a half years since 2006. You know, I think with folks in this room, we can begin structuring something that allows for real critical decision making, real transparency, real supervision that empowers our presidents to make sometimes difficult decisions, um, lowers the cost of education. Students will be the ones who will benefit from your willingness to challenge the status quo and how things have always been done. We're not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater. There are some good things that need to be maintained, but we also need to challenge ourselves and you need to challenge your presidents and the rest of the staff at your institutions to think outside the box. What could we do differently? How do we respond to the changing needs of students and the businesses that are going to hire uh, our students?